Here's a question we get variations on from time to time, and that is, uh, could you maybe do a quick tip on how you know what brushes to use? I uh, said, I did watch your previous tip on brush, but I need a bit more detail. All right, we're going to do it. Well, in Quick Tip 338, uh, I gave you an introduction to types of brushes and why artists have so many brushes. The real truth of the matter is there is no special brush that is absolute, or no special set of brushes that every artist must begin with. Now, first of all, are you talking about oil, watercolor, acrylic, gouache? Because in oil, we have brushes that work better than they do in acrylic. In acrylic, we have brushes that work better than oil. In watercolor, watercolor has its own set of brushes, uh, its own category of brushes. Very rarely is a watercolor brush going to be used for oil or an oil brush used for watercolor. Gouache, it has a broader use of different kinds of brushes. So that's the first thing. I'm going to assume the person is asking about oils. Uh, that's what I'm going to focus on. This is for how do you, uh, what brush should you use for doing oil painting? Okay, here's, here's the way that goes. You have to start with something, a single brush. But what I suggest you do is to find what brushes work for you. And I'm going to show you how, uh, I'm going to show you an exercise for you to do to find which brushes work for you. It could be that a, a brush that works better for your buddy who's doing beautiful paintings just doesn't do the job for you. Maybe you don't relate to it. You know, it's, it's sort of like other tools, like hammers, for example. Uh, I watched recently an episode on um, Ask This Old House, where they talked about, showed different kinds of hammers and their, and their uses, and I thought, I thought there was only just one hammer, because I don't know anything about hammers. Well. He also showed uh, how different, uh, different uh, carpenters might prefer one hammer or another. So don't let anybody tell you there are certain brushes you must have. Find out what works for you. And I'm going to show you a little procedure, a little a set of exercises here where you can explore that for what the brush will do. Now I'm going to use here a Rosemary. This is one of the Master Choice uh, series of Rosemary, my favorite of Rosemary brushes. And I'm using a flat. I explained the different kinds of brushes in the Quick Tip 338. So I'm using the flat and I'm using Rosemary and I'm going to explore it for the first time. Now, if I buy a new kind of brush, I will usually go through this set of exercises with that brush. Now, there are not many right now that I haven't tried, but I still want to know what that brush will do for me. First of all, what is its potential? So, to explore its potential, uh, it's a good idea to know about loading it. What happens, uh, what happens with a brush stroke as a result of how I load the brush? Now, a lot of people, I'm going to pull some white down here so I can have a little bit of variation. A lot of people will, when they first load a brush, won't even think about how they're loading it. They just dip it in the paint and go. That ain't going to cut it. Uh, to, to load a brush, if you need a good bit of amount, a good amount of paint, uh, you do one thing. If you need less paint, you do something else. Now, a good way to load a brush is to not dip it right in the center of your paint on your palette, but to move towards the edge of that and pull the brush down like that. Now, can you see there uh, how that has loaded? Not loaded all the way up to its ferrule here because then you lose control. But having that loaded uh, brush, uh, having the paint come down no further than two thirds or, or maybe three fourths down the, uh, uh, down the bristles of the brush themse themselves. 
how much for for lots of paint well, let me just put enough white in there so you can see it a little bit better uh, let's kind of mix it there we go now you can see that is and if i have that much paint on the brush then i only need to know what kind of stroke can i make now if you stroke it straight ahead like that it's just going to pull the paint away it's not really going to go on as smoothly and so you can't really tell what a brush is going to do uh, by holding it straight out here and there there are techniques that we use where we would do that but applying the paint is not one of them so the angle and so i'm going to reload now it's not a bad idea to load it on both sides and so let's do that now so i'm going to load and you see i'm holding the brush at kind of a 45 degree angle from that pile of paint which enables the paint to go in the brush more smoothly and i'll load it on both sides now look at the difference between what happened here and what happens if i hold that brush at about a 45 45 degree angle is the magic angle for general application of paint general being able to load the brush uh, so that the paint goes into the brush the way you would need it to so at a 45 degree angle it will also depend on how much pressure i put on the brush so say i'm going to put just enough just to bend it you see you see that very very slight bend not that if you put if you push it too hard like that here's what's going to happen so the the amount of pressure you put on also depends on what the brush is going to do for you so let me reload it and each time you develop a habit of this kind of loading and uh and it will become automatic to you all right so let's see if now i'm going to just put a moderate amount of pressure and i can get a good stroke sometimes when you put that first stroke on there no matter how you put it on it will do something like this and you will and what i did just and i'll turn the brush around like that i didn't have much sense. that's what happens when there's not enough quite enough paint in the brush that so uh no being aware of the amount of paint that's in the brush the amount of pressure you're putting on the brush and the angle of the brush that's your first step for learning what the brush will do every brush is going to behave every kind of brush i should say is going to behave differently so that's an exercise that you can practice and you and you'll then gain that knowledge how much pressure just like if someone's using a hammer i'm, I'm going to get in trouble now because i don't know what i'm talking about but if someone's using a hammer uh to put a big nail in a board i would i would think would require a different kind of of stroking of the hammer than putting a, a tiny tack in a board that's the difference it's just a skill there's nothing magic to it so once you learn to how to load the brush once you learn how uh, to stroke it so the paint goes on for general purpose the next thing how is the brush going to shape things so learn next what the brush does and again I'm, you see what i'm doing here i'm loading I load it the same way when I need that paint on there. Now, what does the brush do, for example, if I hold it flat against the canvas? This is what the brush will do when I'm holding it flat against the canvas like that. It layers paint on top of paint. Now, let me show you this in, uh, in a different, slightly different color paint. I'll put some darker paint here. And if I hold it flat, against the canvas you see it puts that darker color on top of the lighter color that's called scumble then the brush will do that if i hold it if i do the same thing let's get that same thing and i put that same hold that, uh, that that same color of paint here but i'm using a more of an angular you see it mixes the color this color will mix into that color and that could be useful but those are things that are go into how to use brushes uh, next thing is uh, what about the different parts of the brush and what it will do now if you're holding the brush on you've got the brush's tip and the tip and you've got its belly the tip and the belly play roles in what the brush will do so if i load it again now suppose I, uh, I want something that well first of all you need to explore what will happen this is not, I'm not, I don't even want to apply this image yet. 
what will happen if I simply use the tip, tip of the brush and pull the brush down. You see there? Now, the amount of pressure I put on it determines how much paint goes on. If I tilt it, let's add more paint. If I tilt it slightly this way, you see what I'm doing? I'm tilting up, not down like that. That is going to give you a wider stroke if you go down. Uh, let's reload it, reshape it. Now, but if I tilt it this way, at this angle very slightly, and come down, you see I can get a thinner line with it. I reload it again, that sort of thing. So depending on, in any direction I'm going, if I tilt it, having it loaded, if I tilt it very slightly like that and let just the back hairs of that brush go on the canvas, I can also do the same thing coming up. I can tilt it this way and come up, you see. And I don't have quite the control in my own work coming up, but you can build the control there. There we go. There we go. And I'll turn this in, tilt it up. So you can see the brush will do that for you. Now, how does the brush shape things for you? The flat brush, as we have here, will also make round shapes. So you say if I'm taking a shape, well, let's just take the shape of this leaf as we have here. And uh, let's say, uh, no, let's see, let's find a rounded shape first of all. I don't see a rounded shape. Well, maybe there. Let's just show you that you can turn. See, I'm doing turning the brush in my hand like this. You can turn the the flat brush around in your hand as you move it and create a round shape. There's the edge of that round shape. Then you can just look. Uh, you can overlap the brush. So you don't need a fill brush to create a round shape. Now, fill brushes do serve in some areas where maybe they, well, sometimes the fill brush just feel, fill brush just feels better to some people. So anyway, so find out when you hold the brush at a slight angle and you turn it in your hand as you move along, find out what it will do for you. That's what I'm getting at right now, Why, finding out what that brush will do for you. Uh, and so that's another exercise you can do. Then another exercise you can do is using the brush to make specific shapes. Now let's say uh, if, if I were making the shape, this just the shape of this leaf, and I see its edge there, so I have an edge here. Let the brush make the edge, and I'll pull the side of the brush. I'm giving a slight tilt. I'll pull the slight side of the brush down. I make that edge and say so I've made now the two two edges of that part of the leaf and then I can take the brush I can take the brush and I can go sideways here to get that next shape of the leaf like that and now I can turn it like this and make this edge the leaf so you see you can use the edge of the brush to create the edges of shapes practice that will the brush do that for you now the other thing, and then there are other things you'll do, you just, if you practice, if you just play around with the brushes to see what it do. What will it do if I do that, for example? Could I ever use something like that in a painting? Well, you might if you need a texture. Or what about if I don't have the brush uh, completely loaded, let me just take some of this out. And what, if, will, what will the brush do if I just turn it up like that? Or what about if I do things like that? You see, if you don't have a whole lot of paint in it, and you're holding it more perpendicular, then you can get textures like that. And you can see how, oh well, that may give me grasses. Try things like this. Try doing zigzag shapes like this. What will that brush do for you if you simply move it in a zigzag shape like that? Now, I've given you several things you can do to explore what the brush will do for you. If the brush you're using is not feeling right to you when you do those things, then try a different brush. If it is feeling right, well then go ahead to the next step and see how you can put those things together in a little study with just one brush. Now, I always like to say that, <laughs> I said it in the Quick Tip 338, and I say it before and I'll do it again. Helen Van Wyck's teacher told her, you can do a painting with a broom if you know what you're doing. Well, perhaps it's a big painting, you might be able to do that. But I, I think the, it, the, the place that people miss out is realizing that this is a tool, it's not a paint applicator. 
because with paint applicator you can, you can put use bunches of different kinds of things to apply paint that's what you're doing you that's not what you're doing you're creating shapes and and variations of shapes and textures and things like that with the brush so if you go through these various little things that I've given you now where you explore what will that brush do I think you find that, that way you can discover which is the right brush to use be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.